What's up, everybody? We're back for more Malifaux lore, and this time we're talking about Karis from the Arcanist. Now, in case you don't know the drill, this video will contain spoilers for all of the stories with Karis, and there will be a list of those stories in the description below for you to check out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and maybe consider sharing this video with someone who you think might like it. And now let's get into it. Karis acquired a reputation for her patience and attention to detail as she worked for various organizations Earthside, helping them to eliminate their unwanted problems. She refused to join up with any one organization, preferring to shop her skills around and helping to maintain a balance of power among the rivals. She is persuaded to go to Malifaux by a group called the Arcanists and meets a man named Ramos, who requests her help in eliminating the stranglehold the guild has over the people of Malifaux. He tells her he needs a representative in the organization that is not a part of the Miners and Steamfitters Union. She decides to think about his request and spend some time in Malifaux, experiencing firsthand the tyranny of the guild and their mistreatment of workers. She also becomes interested in magic and wonders if she has any latent abilities that she could tap into. She decides to accept Ramos's offer on the condition that he personally train her to use magic, and she not only discovers that she can use magic, but she is also quite powerful. Karis is overseeing a work crew that is working on the construct that helps to stabilize the breach. She notices that one of the steamfitters, named Rose Croshaw, slips and cuts herself badly as she is working on part of the machine. Karis approaches her and asks if she is okay, and the woman brushes off the injury, nervously claiming that she is fine, but Karis can see that she is bleeding. She goes on to question the woman as to why a steamfitter is working on a machine that mostly uses electricity. The woman explains that there are boilers that create the energy that is turned into electricity that powers the machine. Karis, being an expert on the subject, points out that while that's true, the part of the machine that she was working on when she injured herself was strictly electrical, and that the woman should have requested the help of Ramos or herself. Croshaw apologizes nervously, and Karis notices that her injury appears to be fully healed. She makes a mental note of this as Croshaw walks away, and she goes back to doing her work. One day, Ramos seeks out Karis at an old metal refinery. He tells her that some allies of his have requested assistance, and he thought she would be a good woman for the job. She follows his instructions and goes to a tea house in the Little Kingdom, where she finds a battle waging between Ramos's allies and the Ten Thunders. She confronts the leader of the Thunders faction, Lady Misaki, and the two of them duel alone. Karis shoots fireballs at the woman, but she is nimble and avoids the attacks. Starting to go frustrated, Karis challenges Misaki, asking her why she owes her loyalty to a group of criminals and thieves. Misaki responds, that she is no better, being a gun for hire, and Karis states that as a mercenary she knows true freedom. Misaki goes on about how her organization has taught her discipline and control, and Karis counters that the power in Malifaux cannot be controlled, demonstrating this in her attacks as she launches volleys of chaotic fireballs at the ninja. Misaki takes this to heart and launches a flurry of random and uncontrolled attacks at Karis, who is about to be overcome when a guild peacekeeper crashes into the building. Knowing that there is no hope now that the guild have arrived in force, Karis makes her escape. Years earlier, before the breach reopened, Karis was adopted from an orphanage by a mistress. She's cleaning up the remains of a dead man in her mistress's basement, wondering why the woman, who is normally abusive and neglecting her, has been unusually nice lately. When she finishes cleaning, she speaks to the mistress, who tells her that she intends to make up for some of her mistreatment in the past, including giving her clean clothes and sending her to school. When Karis asks her about the people that she kills in the basement, the mistress explains that she is in charge of the guild soulstone supply in the city of San Francisco, and that the rituals she performs are used to recharge their limited supply by killing people who are criminals. Karis knows more than she lets on, but she doesn't speak up. Karis could picture the woman flying around the city with her metal wings and scooping up criminals to bring them home to the dungeon. After her first day of school, Karis goes to bed, only to be awoken by loud noises coming from within the house. She follows the noises to her mistress's bedroom, and finds her being held by two men, who appear to be referring to her as Lady Executioner. One man goes to kill her, but the other stops him, stating that she has information that is needed for their movement. Karis considers what to do, and decides that it wouldn't be right to abandon the mistress since she's been treating her nice lately, so she charges into the room and attacks the men, tossing a soul stone to the mistress, who is able to conjure fiery ropes and tie the men up. The mistress tells tells Karis to go to the basement and prepare the ritual, and when she does so, Karis takes the opportunity to ask the mistress to explain the purpose of the runes she has Karis draw. The mistress explains that the runes are used to amplify and focus the power moving from the bodies to the soul stones, and prevent wasting any of the energy. 
She kills the two men and leaves Karis to clean up the mess. The next day, Karis asks the mistress about the men who attacked her. The mistress explains that they were probably mad at her as she gained a reputation during the Black Powder Wars and did some terrible things. Karis continues going to school but soon gets bored of it and starts skipping class. One day she decides to return home to continue reading a book she had hidden but she overhears some voices coming from the mistress's room. She listens in and overhears a man talking to the mistress about an experiment they are performing to try to see if charging a soul stone with the life of a young person who is full of hope will increase its magical power. The mistress seems impatient and the man asks if she will be able to kill someone who has lived with her for two years. She responds that she doesn't even remember the girl's name and will be glad to be rid of her. Karis is horrified and considers running away, but decides instead to return home after school. That night as she is preparing the ritual, she continues to act casual and ask questions of the mistress. When the ritual is ready, the mistress brings two prisoners down to the basement and as she shoots the first one, an explosion goes off as Karis has secretly sabotage the ritual. Karis is disoriented and in pain, but as she looks around she notices that she's in the best condition of all of them. The mistress is in a bloody pool on the ground, and as Karis approaches her with a rock in her hand, the mistress remarks that Karis must have learned something from her, as Karis smashes her face in with the rock. She frees the one man who survived the ritual, and then searches the house for supplies she will need to go on the run. She picks up a few weapons from the mistress's bedroom, and looks behind a secret panel, and finds the shiny metallic wings. When Ramos leaves on an extended mission to the Ten Peaks, he leaves Karis in charge of the Arcanists. At first, she tries to lead like Ramos would, guiding things from the shadows and trying to remain secret. However, she soon decides to take a more direct approach and begins carrying out attacks against the guild. Within a month, she becomes one of the most infamous Arcanists and one of the guild's most wanted. However, even while this is going on, she eagerly awaits Ramos' return so that he can take power again and she can have her freedom back. When Karis had first started training with Ramos, she struggled to conjure any fire. Getting frustrated, she turned to Ramos, who told her that she should stop trying to force and control the fire, but rather to unleash it and let it do what it wants to do. She takes this advice, and the training dummy bursts into flames. Back in present day, Karis is discussing a list of potential guild targets with a subordinate at her union shop. They consider several targets that were left to them by Ramos, but Karis considers them all insignificant and says that she would like to start being more than just an annoyance to the guild. She gets frustrated and goes to leave, but on her way out, several other union members stop her and express their frustration with Ironsides, who had recently sold out Ramos to the guild in exchange for the guild pushing for universal suffrage for black people in the United States. As Karis is her rival within the organization, these men explain that they are loyal to Ramos and would like to make an attempt to spring him from the guild prison in Vienna. Karis responds that they wouldn't even make it Earthside before being arrested or killed and that no one there is to make a move without her instruction. She flies away and seeks out a nearby bar where several union employees are drinking before their next shift. She approaches a group of them and tells them that she needs their help. They explain that they can't because they have to report for a shift soon, and Karis responds that she was not asking. She sends several of the men to track Tony Ironsides, and they watch her as she dismisses her escorts and is walking down the street alone. The group follows her until they think they have her cornered in an alley, but Ironsides was expecting them and turns to face them, only to find that they have disappeared. Suddenly, Karis drops out of the sky and attacks her. Tony defends herself and makes several attempts to get Karis to speak with her, but Karis refuses, constantly swooping down from the sky and attacking the woman, using her greater mobility to her advantage. Tony ducks down an alleyway, and Karis loses track of her before Tony surprises her, grabbing her by the legs and punching her, sending her crashing to the ground. As Karis collects herself, she notices that Tony appears to be retreating into a large factory, which would neutralize her advantage of flight, and she screams with rage. As she follows Tony into the building, shooting fire in every direction. She sees many employees cowering in the corners. Tony points out that their fight is going to cost the lives of many of their own men, and Kara shoots back that what is happening is Tony's fault, so their blood will be on her hands. Tony tries again, insisting that they could simply let the employees leave before they continued their battle, and Karis reluctantly agrees as the workers scramble out of the building. Several of them nod to Tony on their way out, and one even offers to help her, but she dismisses the man. Once the coast is clear, Tony kicks a wrench at Karis, hitting her in the face, and uses the opportunity to launch an attack. Karis takes several blows and uses her fireballs to try to keep some distance between them. However, several of her attacks go wide and start fires inside of the building. She charges at Tony and pins her against a machine as an explosion goes off caused by the fire and a section of the building falls down behind them. Suddenly, they hear a gunshot and Karis looks up to see several guild snipers firing down from above them. Karis tells Tony that they should take care of the guild first and she lifts the woman up, dropping her on the higher levels near the guild snipers. 
Tony easily dispatches several of them, but then notices that the floors are collapsing. At the last minute, Harris swoops in and picks her up, preventing her from falling into fire, and then slams her into a wall outside of the building. Tony once again tries to speak to Karis, but receives a flurry of punches in response, as Karis accuses Tony of betraying the Arcanists, the Union, and Ramos. And Tony responds that Ramos was using both of them as his pawns, pursuing his own selfish goals, and risking Union resources and incurring the Guild's wrath unnecessarily. Karis continues attacking the woman and lands a flurry of body shots that send Tony to her knees. Tony yells that she's had enough of this and throws a powerful uppercut that smashes into Karis's chin, followed by a flurry of attacks. Karis tries to fly away, but collapses to the ground not far from where she took off, barely able to stand back up. Tony tells her that the Union will not be able to survive if they destroy each other, and that their loyalty should lie to the organization and not to Ramos. And Karis responds that that doesn't justify what Tony did to Ramos. Tony then admits that maybe she should have consulted with Karis before making that decision, but that the Guild approached her and the decision was hers to make, and she would make it again given the opportunity. Karis speculates that maybe the Guild had planned this all along, knowing that her actions would cause a rift in the Union. Tony agrees and asks if Karis will keep playing into the Guild's hand or come up with a plan of her own. Karis considers this for a minute and then tells Tony that if she ever does something like that again, she will burn her from the inside out. Tony responds that successful alliances have been made on shakier grounds and offers to shake Karis's hand. Karis considers the gesture for a moment and then flies away. So that's it for Karis. I think she's a really cool character. Her relationship with Ramos and Ironsides is really interesting. And if you haven't read it yet, that last story, A Line Drawn in Fire from the Arcanist book, is maybe my favorite story in Malifaux. I highly recommend you check it out if you can. Not only is it really good for character development of the two women, but the fight's also really intense. And you really get a good contrast between Ironsides' calm and methodical fight style compared to Karis, who is just a rage machine. But anyway, drop a comment below and let me know what master from Malifaux you'd like to see me do a video on next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe pass the video along to someone who you think would appreciate it and thanks for watching.